Hi! In this screencast, we'll learn how to use OpenCV for reading and writing images and videos, and also how to work with USB camera. To read an image from a file, we can use the imread function. In the template case, you just provided a path to the image, and that's it. It will read the image, choose an appropriate decoder based on the file extension, and return a matte object that we can display using the imshow wait key path. Here is our image. The imread function is the easiest and most straightforward way to read the image. Its documentation has a list of all the supported formats, including the most common ones – JPEG and PNG. For demonstration purposes, let's apply a Sobel filter to the image. This is a widely used filter that evaluates partial derivatives of each pixel. First, we provide the input and output images, then we specify the desired type of the result. To preserve fractional part, we'll use floating point format. We omit the number of channels in the type, since it always equals to the number of channels in the input. The last two parameters specify the order of partial derivatives along the x and y axis. We'll use first order derivatives here. Now let's display the result. We'll use imshowWait key function again, but with a minor difference. When a floating point image is displayed, its values are expected to be normalized. That means that the lowest intensity must be equal to 0 and the maximum intensity must be equal to 1. So we'll divide the values by 256 to put most of the values in 0, 1 range. Here's how the filtered image looks like. You can see that the edges are pretty bright, which is the main property of the Sobel filter. Now, if we want to save the image, we can use the imwrite function for this. Just as I'm read, it supports multiple formats and uses the appropriate encoder based on the provided extension. Let's see if it works. File Lina Sobel PNG was created, and now let's see how it looks like. We'll use scp command to copy the file from Jetson to our host machine. Done. Now, is it actually what we wanted? Yeah, it is. Now, we have seen how to read and write single images, but what about video? Working with video is almost as easy. First, we have to create a video capture object and provide it the path to the video. To display it, we'll use the same imshow wait key functions, but this time in a loop. First, we use read method to fetch the image from the video stream. It returns true on success and false if the end of stream was reached. In that case, we want to exit the loop. Then we call imshow and wait key and provide a timeout in milliseconds. Previously, we call it with no parameters which meant to wait for the keyboard input infinitely. This time, it will exit after 30 milliseconds even if no keys were pressed. Wait key will return a negative value if it has exited because of a timeout. But if some key was pressed, it will return its code. We'll check it, and if space was pressed, we'll exit the loop. Now build and run. OK, and here we have our primitive video player. Now let's also apply Sobel filter to the video images and encode it into a file. First, we need to create a video writer object. The first parameter is the output file name. The second parameter is the 4cc code of the video codec to use. You can specify it explicitly using the CV4CC macro. For example, it can be an XVID codec. Next, we specify the number of frames per second. Lastly, we specify the resolution of the video. We'll get it from the input file.
The hardest part is done. Now we apply Sobel filter to our image. Notice that we specify CVU type because video writer will refuse to accept floating point types or either integer types. And then we provide the frame to the video writer object using the write method. Let's process a part of the video. And let's see the result. As expected, it shows us the video with Sobel filter applied. The last subject we'll touch briefly is fetching the images from the camera. We have an ordinary USB camera attached to our Jetson board. The only thing we need to do for reading its images is to provide a zero argument to a video capture constructor. It will open the default capturing device, which in our case is the USB camera, since it's the only capturing device available. Now let's see if it works. Here's our display. And here's our Jetson board. Great! 